This is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. To see my beautiful collection of minerals and crystals, go to my website, Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals, which unfortunately is still under construction. If you have any comments, please leave them at this video or at my email, frankriserrocksminerals at gmail.com. Riser is R-E-I-S-E-R. -E This is going to be a discussion of the history, development, and theory of the atomic and thermonuclear bombs. So let's get to it. By the way, my hobby is manga art or anime. And that is one of my drawings. If I'm lucky, I'll find her on Christian Mingle. On August 9, 1945, and three days later, at the end of World War II, the United States ended the war in the Pacific by dropping the bombs, the atomic bombs, on Japan on the cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Those atomic bombs were the equivalent of the conventional explosive trinitrotoluene, or TNT, about 15 kilotons of TNT. The first bomb dropped was uranium. The second one was plutonium and was two times stronger. The atomic bombs were developed in the Sonoran Desert of the United States at a scientific location called Los Alamos, overseen by J. Robert Oppenheimer and the Westinghouse Corporation. Let me show you, well, let me discuss this first. The uranium is mined in Utah. It is then purified in the form of uranium hexafluoride and centrifuges. The uranium hexafluoride is then concentrated into a sphere of uranium oxide of a specific proportion of two isotopes of uranium to form weapons grade uranium. And these proportions are 5% of the radioactive uranium-235 with 95% of the non-radioactive uranium-238. It is in the form of uranium oxide, UO2, which is black. Mickey here is holding a specimen of weapons grade uranium and you can hear its radiation with a Geiger counter. It is emitting alpha, beta and gamma radiation. <sighs> like natural radioactive uranium, ura weapons grade uranium is safe to handle and is not very radi radioactive. The safety precaution is to keep the ur uranium or any radioactive rock approximately three meters from you for storage and can be handled for observation with a Geiger counter only occasionally. It only really causes cancer if you keep it on your person for long periods of time as if you mounted it on a piece of jewelry but otherwise it's pretty safe. It is not safe when it reaches its critical mass. How does it reach its critical mass?
The uranium oxide is made into a perfect sphere, surrounded by a perfect sphere of nickel, a moderator metal. Around the nickel are conventional explosives that when they explode, they cause an implosion, slightly increasing the density of the uranium oxide until it reaches its critical mass. At the critical mass, the uranium releases a tremendous amount of radiation of alpha, beta, and gamma and reaches a temperature near the surface of the sun of 10 million degrees. And this is according to Einstein's equation E equals mc squared where E is energy in ergs times mass times the speed of light which is 100 meters per 100 meters 100,000 meters per second squared. With the thermonuclear bomb, the radioactive water called tritium is responsible for the release of a tremendously larger amount of radiation. In order to get tritium to reach its critical mass, it must be exposed to an extremely high temperature, and that high temperature can be provided by an atomic explosion reaching the 10 million degrees. At that temperature, the tritium then releases its neutrons and protons and breaks apart, releasing and gamma rays as well in the process, releasing a thousand times more radiation than the atomic bomb. The atomic bomb nucleus of the uranium breaks apart in a process called fission. The nucleus itself is broken into pieces with the release of radiation. With the thermonuclear bomb, the tritium undergoes fusion, forming heavier elements, with an even far greater release of radiation. The sun is undergoing fusion, and you can see the power of the sun and feel the heat of it, even though it's 93 million miles away, on average. This is tritium water, heavy water. It has three neutrons and one proton orbited by an electron in the form of H2O, normal formula for water. After World War II, the United States continued the research and development of stronger atomic and thermonuclear bombs. A lot of this research was proportioned to the Westinghouse Corporation. My grandfather worked at Westinghouse in Bloomfield, New Jersey. He was a sector mass spectroscopist. He worked on the development of the atomic and thermonuclear bombs, as well as light bulb filaments. Let me show you a picture of him. Theodore Ellis. Next to him is the Soviet Union scientist Igor Kurchatov. Igor Kurchatov was assigned as the only person to work on the thermonuclear bomb, an atomic bomb, in the Soviet Union for the purpose of secrecy. He worked day and night under an incandescent light bulb on a large table, devouring the calculus-laden equations smuggled in by the United States scientists, such as by Claus Fuchs and others, certain other scientists that would purposely release their information to the Soviet Union for money. Klaus Fuchs was caught and spent 20 years in prison in England. Uh, after his release, he became uh, the head of atomic research at a university. I forget the name of the university. In order to obtain the uranium oxide in the form that is weapons grade, the uranium is mined in Utah 
and is then converted chemically to uranium hexafluoride and centrifuges and then changed to the form of uranium oxide in the proportion I showed you. Igor Kachatov then went on afterwards. Igor Kachatov, by the way, was responsible for the development of the largest test thermonuclear bomb equivalent to 50 megatons of the conventional explosive TNT, trinitrotoluene. The atomic bombs dropped on Japan were 15 kilotons of TNT. Today's thermonuclear bombs are 1,000 times stronger and theoretically can be 3,000 times stronger. Atomic bombs take out cities, whereas thermonuclear bombs take out countries. As a Christian, I just, uh, I walk my dog, I pick up garbage around the neighborhood, put carts back at ShopRite, and, well, grocery stores, I don't mean to mention any names. Uh, bring in people's newspapers, uh, shovel their walkways, uh, do a random acts of kindness. And unfortunately, it's sad to think that the world, this is my philosophy, uh, focuses on just the opposite by developing weapons to destroy the world. There are approximately 3,666 atomic, excuse me, thermonuclear bombs around the world right now. Enough to destroy the world 13 times over. And this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. Always reminding you to keep looking down. Oh, by the way, if you're interested, I also sell radioactive rocks. Just email me. And this, they're safe. They're safe. And this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. Always reminding you to keep looking down.